Okay, guys and girls, hello, welcome back. I've uh, got new, uh, well, it's not a new toolbox, second-hand toolbox, and I've expanded a little bit to get some more real estate in the workshop. Yeah, I do need a lot of space because I do a hell of a lot of stuff, and uh, I need the uh, surface area to put my tools on, which is mine. New toolbox there, that was a trade-in, believe it or not. It's not new, it's second-hand. It is a little bit rusty, but it's a, a stay because... Um, I'm just accumulating so many tools, I uh, need to put them somewhere. Are the guys in workshops that say, oh, you don't need big toolboxes. Well, actually, you do. The more responsibilities you have, the more tools you have, the more space you actually need. Anyway, um, I haven't actually bought any uh, new tools recently. I've still got the old stuff. I'm just uh, spreading out so I know where they're at. Um, this job I do is utterly filthy, and I'll show you... Uh, this one, I just had to change an airbag um, and drill out an aluminium chassis because it was rotten. Okay, tools usually end up laying in the grot and they need to be cleaned up. The job here is a uh, semi-trailer, three axle. Uh, plenty of work on this because it's old. Anyway, what I want to show you here, you guys probably will remember if you've been following me, um, the DeWalt drill. Okay, this isn't called, um, brushless, so I thought it was. It's got small batteries on it. Bought it as a kit for about 125 quid, and that's with a, a, a Torx bit as well. This is the old workshop drill, and it's still going strong, believe it or not. Uh, that's about eight years old. We've got two of them, and they get used, they get abused. And the batteries, believe it or not, we've just gone through the first set. So this is the second set we bought for them, and uh, yeah, they're good. This is why I went out and bought a Dewalt. I'm confident with them. Right, so the other thing, um, lamps, okay, now I showed you this uh, last year or a year and a half ago now. Um, this was got from 4B. Now, you can't get these um, anywhere in the country, but what I'm saying, this is a Nielsen um, torch. Now, um, it's lasted the abuse in the workshop because it does get shitty, and uh, the only issue I've actually had is I've, uh, with the charger, the charger wires are a bit weak, and that's not the, I had to splice it into a new one. That, all good. What you can get from 4B, and this is yet again a Nielsen one, this is, uh, has a uh, 5 volt uh, USB plug like your mobile charger, so you can use it on your mobile charger, and you can see how filthy it is there. It's lasting the course, okay? Brilliant lamp, and it's a very, very bright for a hand torch. What you need to do is to um, talk to uh, 4B, for any needs that you have for tools because he has access to uh, Nielsen suppliers. Absolutely brilliant. Now this one is uh, rubber skinned and it cleans up nicely. Okay, so that's another pride in my toolbox and it's cheap as well, believe it or not. Right, so this is the sort of shit I have to deal with um, constantly is uh, things when I'm using the gas axe, all right. Yeah, it's a wonderful tool, but look at the mess under here. I've uh, just had to gas something off. Um, Things with these gas torches, you've got to be careful with them to make sure that the pipes don't get any uh, spatter on them and the heads don't overheat. And I always make sure that this never overheats, so uh, it's working for me. This is me, safety gear, of course. I'm laying actually on my crawler board, which I made. I did show you this, and it's working well because when I'm um, gassing, it doesn't set light to the material because it hasn't got any. Got bump hat, um, goggles, and a shroud around my ears. And yeah, this is a shitty job, honestly. Sometimes you get some old crap in and they need heat to uh, convince the uh, metal to, uh, to come off. I'm heating the nut on this. Um, the uh, chibbler or the uh, nibbler, whatever you want to call it, the needle gun. Okay, um, some people say, oh, use this for cleaning rust off. It's not really for that. It's for cleaning flakes of rust. Okay, and I use this quite regularly. That was a Parkside one from Aldi's, and it works really well. You can see how clean that is. Complete, completely clean the area up so I can put another shock absorber on there. All right, so the, the rest of the axle is manky because this sits by the port. It has uh, fish guts and the such like drip down onto everywhere. And the yeah, trailers, this type of trailer rusts very quickly. Now, uh, shock absorber bolts, um, yeah, this it seems to be an issue. And so do the shockers. It's not actually illegal to not have a shroud on a shock absorber, but if it's loose, then it is, and it needs to be uh, rectified. 
Um, manufacturers have now come up with plastic shrouds at last, so they don't rot, so these shock absorbers will last a lot longer. This is what I fitted uh, on Friday, and I'm going to talk about this because um, what I want uh, to discuss with you, I want some ideas about what you think your risk assessments are. Do you think it's dangerous to gas off or um, use a lot of heat at the bottom of a shock absorber? Um, think about it first. Uh, what I basically do if the bolts are seized solid, um, the um, ferrule on the inside will be seized as well. Now I have a certain procedure that I go through and I do a risk assessment, but I want to see what you think about um, actually heating this to a temperature. Do you think that the shock absorber is actually going to explode? I personally wouldn't advise to do it on Land Rovers, HGV is a little bit different. Anyway, you can see the ferrule in here, I've had to cut right the way through it so I can get the bolt out. And you can see it's not even damaged. Another frustration I have is when I get um, wires which are uh, in parallel. Okay, this is the side lights and I also have an interior light here. Which uh, wire colours are different and uh, I can't actually remember which way around they've gone, so I had to test them. A uh, number plate lamp on the rear was connected to that lamp, which also supplies the side markers in parallel. And this poor old trailer, it's uh, actually got a lot of work on it, but by the time I've finished it, it's uh, actually MOTable. We're really busy at the moment, and I don't know why, it's just we've got a hell of a lot of work. This old Vico needs a clutch fitting. Um, it's not my job, it's the bloke who's working next to me. Last week we had a diff go down and the bearings went on this and it's very unusual that diffs actually go. A comparison to the size of my foot to the size of the diff, you'll see it's not actually a small unit. Now this is an air operated uh, diff locker, you can see the fork there. Air operation will put the fork in, it'll lock it onto the splines and then obviously the half shafts are locked in. Um, this is a standard on uh, HGV diffs. Whereas as Land Rover owners, we have to uh, adapt them. Anyway, look, there's a, a pinion that snapped clean off. This one was recovered. This was uh, this week, and it's made a mess of the diff. It is actually looking more like a, a Land Rover workshop with uh, gearboxes and engines uh, out and in repair. We don't often actually do gearboxes or engine jobs. But when we do, they come out. Liners actually uh, can be pulled in the workshop, replaced along with the pistons, which means we don't have to send it to an engineer's. But you get the idea of the uh, size of the engine here, can't you? This engine is a Packard MX-13 engine. So this week, anyway, I've actually been really, really busy. Friday night didn't help because they had a traffic accident and uh, I left off work at one o'clock. I got home at 6 o'clock, which was uh, a bit of a bitch, to be honest with you. Right, so anyway, um, I'm just going to tell you guys, uh, the loyal ones, that it's actually Brooke Wells that are going to be sponsoring us, and we're going to be doing diffs and uh, the Salisbury Axle, of course, as well, and we'll eventually get round to the 300 TDI if um, they like us. So we'll have to see how it goes. Just remember to keep liking and commenting on the videos and uh, it'll look good on them and of course have a look at Brookwell's uh, website as well because uh, they, they, they're they quite interesting but I'll go into it in a little bit more detail in the next video I'll just uh, push this one together because I know that you guys wait for a video at the weekend even though last weekend you had a double bill so I can get out of that one can't I so anyway we'll, uh, I'll see you soon okay